Hey everybody, my name is Andre Salazar and you're watching The Art of Comics. Today we're going to be talking about Fantastic Four Grand Design. Let's do it. Okay guys, today we're talking about Grand Design. I just finished reading this about literally five minutes ago, so I came down into my palatial studio <laughs> where I'm making comics and I thought let's just do this video right now while I'm here so um, those of you who watched my episode of my cross-country trip I got this at retrograde comics in Little Rock Arkansas definitely recommend go check this out and I wanted to get it because uh, one you know I'm a fan of uh, cartoonist kayfabe channel and some of those other kind of like online things and I really liked Tom um, is it Scioli? I'm gonna say Scioli. Tom Scioli's work on Godland. I really thought that was really fun. He did, I think it was Joe with Joe Casey, uh, Image Comics. So I wanted to pick it up. I really liked uh, Hip Hop Family Tree and this kind of like uh, packaging. So I thought, let's get this, let's check it out. And I'm gonna say right now, it's, by the way, it's, it's of course it's Marvel, retails for 30 bucks. Um, I like this a lot. And I think it's something definitely we're gonna talk about. It's important to kind of like chat about it and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the art's fun, the packaging, and kind of like this this setup, this production is really kind of interesting that I wanna chat about. And um, I think it's definitely worth 30 bucks to get. There's a great Stanley Jack Kirby story in here too that definitely we're gonna talk about. Uh, it kind of makes it even more. I'm not sure if there's more of these coming. I don't know if this was just, this is it, or if there's more. Um, I'm assuming there probably will be more. Don't know what the sales numbers are, but I thought this was really good. This was a lot of fun. And if you like Fantastic Four, you gotta get it. I say if you like Fantastic Four, you must get it. If you're into superhero stuff, you gotta get it. If you're into like the history, you gotta get it. Um, let's just go ahead and dive down into the details, okay? Let's go check it out. Come on, let's do it. Okay, everybody, so here we are looking at the uh, Tom Scully's Fantastic Four Grand Design. So, um, I mean, uh, to me, the big selling point of this book is the production and just kind of how this is made. Uh, I'm just a big fan of the setup of this and so let's just talk a little about it it is large uh you know it's it's normal it's larger than normal let's give you an example uh, you know here's like a normal a normal book uh right there and uh here's an example of here's monera's book right there and so this is actually, you know what, why don't we get, let's get technical. Uh, it is nine by, what, 14 probably? 12, nine by 13? Yeah, so it's nine by 13. Actually, that feels kind of a weird size, but okay. Nine by 13 book. Um, I really like the in papers here. I think these are kind of these are like actually really cool. Um, again, it's got that feel of, you know, it's got this. It's it's a nice thicker paper, but it's got the newsprint kind of quality to it. You know, it's all kind of going back to a throwback of a classic golden age or silver age kind of uh, comics. So it's got that like uh, overlay texture, you know, in Photoshop layered. I will say that I think that. Um, this is actually really nice, by the way. I really like this here. This is really cool. Uh, even little things like that, I really dig. Just these little little extra touches. Um, sometimes, I think he's inking, but I would not be surprised if that maybe some of this is just pencils and he's just coloring on top of pencils. I need to do two things. I need to email him and ask him what the art pages are, the originals. Because I want to know if how big the originals are. Because I don't think it's a one well, by 17. I think it's a different dimension. And two, I want to ask if he's inking everything. Because definitely this is not inked. This cover here, this is penciled. 
uh, and he's penciling it and then just coloring on top. But I can't tell if all this is like that. Some of this feels like it's penciled, but there are moments when I'm like, oh, maybe he is inking it. I can't tell. So I would not be surprised either way. That said, I will say that I was a tiny bit disappointed in that I thought this would be a little more like Godland in the art style. A little bit more like Jack Kirby, you know, kind of that classic Kirby look, which he's so good at. Um, it's not. It's drawn um, a little differently, and I don't really know how to describe it other than it's a little more simpler cartooning. Um, this, by the way, these first couple pages are probably some of the best stuff in the book. Um, I really do dig this a lot, this kind of like, um, just, you know, the, the explorers, astronauts coming in, the colors, this kind of angled, you know, um, paneling uh, with e eternity there. Um, you know, he does know, of course, his experience and love of, of Kirby stuff. He knows the kind of Kirby architecture and kind of, you know, uh, machinery and stuff like that. The celestials, all this stuff is really great. And when you get into the book, you see that everything is done in this five by five grid. So everything in the whole story, in, in both issues, and this has two issues plus a backstory, which I'll share with you in a minute. But this whole thing is a, as you can tell on this page specifically, you can tell that this is a five by five grid, okay? So 25 panels. And then of course at times he can, you know, combine panels to make it bigger. And he does that every now and then for emphasis, right? But it's a 25, it's a 25 panel page. And I really like that. I think that's really cool kind of like conceit or constraint to put your storytelling in. I think the big takeaway of this is this. If you like kind of the history of comics, if you like, kind of like the X-Men Grand Design too, if you like the history of comics, if you want like a snapshot, a quick overview of the history of the Fantastic Four, this is what you want. This is the, this is the kind of the digest version of the first, you know, X amount of issues of the series, okay? But if you want some more detail, if you want to get into like the personalities and the people and that kind of stuff, you're going to miss all that because there, he's only doing a few panels for the whole issue, okay? So if you want to get down and get into storytelling from the character perspective and get that inner, inner character, you know, uh, relationship thing, you're not going to get that in this. This is a much higher view overview of their adventures. So that's something to think about because it's not really engaging from a character perspective. It's just kind of like cool to see how all these stories came about. And I think for me, what is neat to think about is how did Tom strategize and build out the story? Meaning, okay, so say you have one page to tell the story of one issue. So there's 24 pages in a comic. There's 25 panels. How do you do that? What are the key panels that move that story forward? What And some of these panels are cribbed exactly from the originals and some are not. So that's kind of fun. It's like, okay, this is such a great panel. I'm going to take this from the original and use it, right? Like this one here is one I recall, right, of Dr. Doom. So what do you use that is like iconic from that issue. That's kind of something cool to think about. And how do you tell the story from that, like this this conceit of here we are and we have this many X number of pages, panels to tell the story. I think that is cool. That is kind of like what this is about is that level of, of uh, preparation and storytelling. If you're like wanting to read compelling stories of Fantastic Four, this I don't think is gonna be that because this is really more of a historical document. It's just like a catalog of events. So you're not gonna get that heart pulling emotional stuff. You're just gonna get kind of like blah, blah, blah. Now there's some good moments here, don't get me wrong. 
and you kind of, but this is more like, let's read this and then go, oh, you know what? I want to go back and find those, those issues. And in fact, in the back, he's got the annotations, which is great because you can be like, okay, read Richard's history was first explored in Fantastic Four 11 and his father, Nathaniel, appeared in Fantastic Four 7, uh, to 72 in the original human torch right so you can like okay i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna go find these back issues and read the full story i think that's how you read this this didn't engage me as much as i wanted it to because it is more historical it is more uh a kind of look on how to tell a high view um 30, foot view of the history of the characters but then you use this to then go back into these areas like, okay, you want to learn about why Namor and Sue Richards were like hot on each other. Okay, well then you go, you okay, now I want to go back and get those originals and read the whole story, right? So I think from that perspective, that's kind of the way to use this. And and don't get me wrong, the storytelling is great and the all that, but the art too is just, I was really, I guess I was just really kind of hoping for that Godland type of, do I have Godland next to me? No, I don't. Um, that kind of like really high uh, stylized Kirby stuff. And this is a lot more uh, simpler and broken down into basic bits. And I don't think that's bad. I think that's also necessary for the fact that you've got 25 panels a page. So with 25 panels a page, with, mind you, you know, half of that is dialogue, you have very small room to draw something that is representative of a story. So because of that, you're only hitting these big, like iconic kind of images. That's hard to do. So, so props to him. The planning of this was probably amazing and super fun. I can imagine uh, if I was doing something like this, I would have a freaking blast and maybe have a mental breakdown at the same time because it'd be hard. So I dug it. The only other thing I would say is the uh, overlaid kind of uh, texture that he's putting on the pages, at sometimes it feels a little too dark, just a smidgen. Um, it just feels like it's a little too hard to read at times and it's a little too dark. It's different than the um, Ed Piskers. He's using a different kind of like, um, layer and I like the concept I like the idea of it but I feel like there's times when it's just a little too dark so I'm just gonna say that there that's my little my little caveat but this is really nice again if you like the history all that kind of stuff definitely highly recommend it check it out now the other thing this had that I did not know that actually I am super stoked about that I just read was this this is a copy of the full issue of Fantastic Four, I think it's 60, 51. Yeah, Fantastic Four 51, uh, This Man, This Monster. And man, it is good. It is good. This is with the King, Jack Kirby, Stanley writes it. Uh, Joe Sano is the inker. Uh, very good story. Great art, and I love this size. I would love to get Jack Kirby's, all Jack Kirby's work at this size. I love it big like this. Uh, this look, I said Ed did the coloring, which is great, fine by me. I don't know why they didn't just use the normal coloring, other than I know they put his text, his little like texture here. I don't know why they didn't use originals, but whatever. I can't complain. The coloring looks great. I wouldn't have known. If you wouldn't have said it, I would have said, okay, this is the original coloring. So. Kudos to that. It does not stand out in a way that's like distracting. The art here is really phenomenal. Um, as you know from other videos I did, I don't have that much Kirby stuff. So I'm not a huge Kirby guy, but this really turns me on. Some of the stuff is just really good. I don't know why I like his hands and faces and it's got this blockiness to it, but it's also like just right. And, you know, it's just really good. It's a great story of... Ben Grimm meets this guy who's a scientist, drugs him, somehow uses his molecular DNA or what have you, 
puts it in him and he becomes the thing. This crooked scientist guy becomes the thing. Now he's going to destroy Reed Richards as the thing and he winds up saving Reed Richards' life. And it's, it's actually really good. It's really, really good. So this was actually a great treat to have. Um, and this is kind of cool. I mean, this is like great Kirby stuff. Really dug this a lot. Just great panels. Great, great stuff, man. There's just some panels in here that I'm like, oh, this is great to use. That's another great one, too. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Some Fumetti stuff here. So, really big fan of this story. Really big fan of the art in this. Definitely a added bonus I wasn't expecting. But if they could do stuff like this, oh my gosh, I would be all over it. Um, big fan. It's kind of a cool image that uh, Piscor did. Like a variant cover. Show a couple more covers. Here's another. Here's one Tom did. Here's Jim Rugg. He did a variant cover with like four horsemen, you know, from wrestling, WCW. Um, and here's the, the, the kind of additional reading annotation stuff, which is really cool. If you want to go back to the originals. And then he's got some cover concepts and some, I, I like this one a lot too, actually. Uh, so really kind of neat. Uh, short video, just wanted to break this down to you guys. I thought this was cool. Definitely for the history marks, those guys who like Fantastic Four, I think it's a must. Everybody else, you know, I think it's pretty good. Uh, again, really cool idea. And there you go. Thanks all you guys for watching my videos. Check out all the others, subscribe, link all that stuff. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. And have a great one, guys.